I told you, as I told you, well, now we need to place this friend. Okay, so to do that, we're going to subtract from the platform sprite the player sprite height. Okay, the position here, remember, uh, this position, okay, this point here, okay, this one, imagine that is like. I don't know 500 in the y axis okay minus this value of the height so the point in y here minus the height it will give you this coordinate here in the y axis so we go here and we are going to refresh the screen to see if this thing is happening refresh and that's it it is over the platform now what about the X well we want it uh, in the middle of the screen okay so well, we can do that just like let's duplicate this and uh, X so now check if you want it in the middle of the screen so well let's say here is the middle of the screen well the position if you put it no okay let's say that it's in the middle but remember the point to place things in app inventory is the upper left point okay of your sprite so this is the part that we need to place it in the middle okay so let's go here let's do it so let's say that we want to have we're going to use another nothing we're going to divide the size of the canvas the width the width the width the width divided by two so now divided by two minus i will go with minus to make it like in the middle in the middle okay divided by two and this value minus the player width so let's refresh this thing and then it's in the middle okay so it is in the middle and maybe it is player divided by two. I mean, this is not very important, okay? This uh, initial pre uh, position that you assign just trying to help you to give you options when you are like programming, okay? So hey, again, here we go, we refresh, and that's it, in the middle, okay? Because it is like checking the half of the screen and then the half of the player because remember the position is in the upper left so we don't want it in the upper left we want to place it in the half of the player sprite and that's it that's the way we create the sprite uh, the player and the platform okay and we place them and scale them and scale them in app inventor okay well now it's time to go to the next part of the tutorial that it will be like uh, checkpoint one so let's create this so now let's go to moving player well let's start like moving the player so as I told you there are different ways you can do this I will show you the same way uh, I use in the video okay in the video I share so first we have this little friend and we want to have the screen if I touch the screen on the left left side okay so in this guy imagine that this is 720 well 720 if we divide it by two this thing 720 is like 300 I guess um, 60 okay so 360 here 
and 360 okay so for example if you check it in the video we want it so it is from 0 to 360 and here is from 300 to I know it is not 700 sorry it is the 1280 sorry got confused that is like 200 it is not 200, it is 100, 600, uh, mm -hmm. um, I guess it's like this one. So this is the hardest, you will use uh, 1280, well I guess yes. We duplicate this so you have here here in this part in the half of the screen is 640 now in the other part is from 640 to this to okay quite annoying this kind of font then you think let's use this one oh, let's use this one okay let's see why is this let's see why is this so as I told you, you have here in the screen, if you if we divide it in uh, by two the screen, we will have here values from zero to six hundred eighty, I say, or six hundred forty. From zero to okay, here to the half of the screen. And the other part it will be from 640 to this and that's it okay so now if we want to use the touch to move things to the left or to the right we need to say hey you know what if I touch the screen a screen okay where the value of x it is like <clears throat> smaller than 640 okay so i wanted the player to move to the left but if i touch the right side i mean a value okay if i touch the screen where the x value of the touch it is like bigger than 640 okay so I wanted this uh, player to move to the right. So now let's go here and let's pass this to App Inventor. Okay. To move things, okay, we are going to use clocks. To make them easier, we are going to use two clocks. We are going to use these clocks and we are going to refresh these clocks by time by 10 and by 10 now here we have and then we are going to rename this we are going to call it left clock and this is going to be right clock pretty smart right right clock that's it now both are disabled when we start so now remember that i told you that when we touch the half of the screen so we're going to create a procedure for that so let's call the procedure moving left okay to move in left first we're going to create what this thing that we want to happen okay for this we're going to start creating variables to start values to move things 
So let's move here this guy and then create the first variable. The first variable that we're going to create, okay, is like you can call it x speed or speed. In this case, because we are going to move to left or right, it is just by modifying the x position of the player x speed or speed x let's call it player speed x and we are going to set this value to what about 20 that's it okay player speed will move like 20 by 20 so now if we are going to do that, remember I told you, we need to know the coordinates and this thing. Okay, so what? First, we are going to need the touch. Let's touch. Okay, where is this touch? Okay, what is happening? For example, you put here, here. So now, then we are going to uh, modify the position of the player so let's say that the x position of the player will change okay so but we are going to use a conditional if we are going to use this new value that we're going to take from the canvas with getx touch I created just this uh, variable here in this procedure okay so don't worry right now so if this value it is smaller than remember the canvas the half of the canvas so how can we know the half of the canvas well we're going to divide the size of the canvas by two. That's it. Okay, so we want to modify okay the position of the player slide. So let's use this one. X the platform the player be careful by speed okay so every time the clock will be like doing this okay if this is happening here it's my uh, smaller okay it will move to the left but remember if you go to the left values have to be uh, like decreasing so in this case it is not plus Okay, so my mistake. We're going to use this. So based on the actual position, so I want you to subtract the uh, by using the uh, split, the player's x split. Yes. So now, if this is happening, but what happens if I am not touching a value that is uh, smaller than the half of the canvas? Well, else we're going to do this one duplicate and now we remove this and now we are going to go with values for this well that's it okay we will move the player like that now we need the clock so let's use first the left clock hmm, I am thinking that I, we can use both clocks but not all clocks let me check because I was thinking this but the procedure I did is because sometimes when I like make these things okay I change okay so I change my mind so let's see this if this works better okay well first what happened we are going to touch so we need to get the coordinates for this so where are the coordinates so we're going to use touch so we are going to get these values that we want okay so 
when touch okay so what do we need uh, well, let's call this guy here let's call it here x touch and now it's missing a value this is the value that we are going to get from here so for that we need another val a variable because we cannot take it from here to here because this is like a local variable okay so let's call it x touch position 2 and let's call it in at the beginning 0 okay here okay and then when we start like touching this thing we want to set this new variable to the x when we touch okay and this variable it will be like here now when i touch i want to uh, enable the clock okay so but when i keep it like touched so let's go here and we are going to use another thing from canvas so when you touch down and when you touch up touch up is when you uh, release your finger from the screen okay so touch down we are like touching this thing so we have the coordinate so we can use in this case the same okay and we eliminate this so when i touch i want you to enable this clock okay so let's go to enable 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 this clock set timer enable to true yes and then what happened when we release the finger oh, we disable the clock okay to stop our character now let's check what happens now it's moving so it's not necessary to have the right clock okay so now so let's call it left right clock and this one it will be for jumping jumping clock now I changed this because in the tutorial well not in the first app that I did I did it the other way okay so there are different ways to accomplish things in app inventor but this is way we do it okay so just just review this thing okay so we created a variable okay in this procedure we created a variable okay so because we wanted to in, uh, input this thing but what we are talking about that the x touch okay or the coordinate of the x when we touch the canvas we want to know if this is smaller than uh, the half of the canvas okay so if this is smaller we, we want to move to the left so in that case we are going to subtract the actual position minus the speed that we created the variable in this case it will be like moving like 20 pixels okay to the left okay every time the clock ends its cycle so then uh, else so what happened if this value it is not smaller but if it is bigger than the half of the screen well it will move to the right okay so that will it will increase the current position okay by uh, adding the speed okay every time the clock uh, cycles yes and then we are going to do this where we check this uh, this moving procedure we inserted in the clock the left right clock okay we insert we created a new variable okay global variable to store the x and y position that we got from touch down okay so then here when we touch down okay we keep pressed the, the screen so we want first to obtain this value from this uh, thing so we get the x okay the x is like the x uh, position of the touch where your finger was okay talking about the x axis and then we activate or enable the clock so the clock 
got this value okay this from here okay and it was checking a hey, this is uh, smaller or this is bigger and then it moves subtracts or adds to the position and that's it did you keep it free and it was like moving 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 and that's it so it's not necessary to say oh because uh, to stop it because in app inventory it will stop when it gets to the border okay but you can add something like okay if the position of the player it is uh, bigger than the size of the canvas well disable the clock okay but it's a very good idea okay but that is the idea to move this player over our platform and now we are just missing this thing that is the the jumping part but I guess for the jumping part I will make it in another tutorial uh, we have worked with this and in case you can watch other the videos uh, other videos I, I I have made with this kind of jumping thing the jumping Mario you can watch that one okay or uh, you just can wait for the next part of the video hmm or I can make it right now well, let's make it because this is a big tutorial remember so well we have here a jumping clock now the jumping clock it's pretty simple no it's not pretty simple I mean so for this thing to jump our player we need to create some other variables so now I like to create another variable that is this one is walking and we are going to set this to false so now we want to detect sometimes this is very convenient okay we want to detect this because we don't want to move or to walk while we are in the in the air or sometimes yes we want but in this case I guess no okay what about this when I touch okay when I touch this thing okay so when I touch down player is walking we set it to true but if we touch up or remove the finger from the screen we set it to false this is going to help us okay well now talking about the other one so if we have this one we don't want to our character to jump while we are jumping okay just while we are walking for example so he's jumping equal to false okay at the beginning okay so well now we are going to create this for this we need we need to know the ground the ground that we have okay so we can say that we can create a variable called ground ground platform ground platform and we are going to start the value just at zero okay maybe zero yeah I guess we know the value okay zero at the beginning but when we load the screen okay when the screen initializes so we can get this coordinate remember that I told you that the crown it was here the position of the Y okay so this is uh, the position of the ground of the platform sprite so this is my ground okay in this case we're going to set the ground I'll use this one and change it to ground platform ground and we're going to set it here okay initial placement the platform it will be this one we take it from here and then we have the crown remember it's just the crown okay but the player's position it will be this this one okay so we will need to subtract so for that the crown is for our player okay so we can subtract in this part this minus the height of the player we have the correct placement Okay, you can make it later in the procedure that you will be using like the crown okay so 
I guess I'm going to do it right now here. So, here, so this position minus. So, the player height. Player sprite height. And we will have the background, the ground, the global platform ground variable. Okay, we're going to use this value. Okay, now remember that we change here. Okay, so if we do it, we will have that this value in my in my, in App Inventor. But if you have a different screen, don't worry, it will be like different value. So then I just like have it here. Just I will add a comment here. Just to remember what value is this one. That's it. But to start with this, we have the platform. Now, what else do we need? Well, maybe if we are going to jump, we need the gravity. The gravity it will uh, force the player to go down. Okay, but well, we don't want the player to go to the bottom of the screen. We want the player to go down to the ground so well, let's set this to 9.8 then we check it and fix it okay so we have the gravity okay and I guess another one that we're missing is the speed or like this one duplicate player speed y every time you jump you are like adding a speed okay but remember when you go up, your values are uh, going line, are decreasing, so you need negative values. Okay, so in this case the speed goes to minus uh, 18, for example, minus 18. And the gravity is you now is taking you down, okay, by using this positive force. Okay. Well, you have the gravity, you have the player speed, and I guess we are almost ready to do this. For do, uh, to work with this, okay, we're going to work with a flunk. I want my player to jump while uh, I flunk, okay? So, in this case, we're going to make it like this. So, there are different ways to make it so I want it when I long or I swipe okay so you can make it for example I know you know what I wanted to jump to the right when I flung to the right and I want to make it jump to the left when I flung or swipe to the left okay instead of using like maybe if I flung from this like this or like this so I'm gonna do it that way, okay? If you flunk from left to right, I want it to jump, okay? I want it to jump to uh, the right. If I flunk from the left, from the right to the left, I want it to jump to this part, okay? To the left. And if I flunk, okay, from, uh, from down to up, Okay, I wanted to, to jump just in a vertical jump. Okay, so let's try to make this. For this, we're going to use this, some of these values from here. Okay, so check here. If you check the information that we have here, well, it will help you, okay? So when you click, it's made canvas, provide the X and Y position of the start of the thing. Okay, provides the, the pixel speed, okay? And the heading in degrees, okay? So it will go from zero to 360 okay so this is important the heading it's really important so if we flunk okay so this is like 0 180 and then it will go like 360 okay so what so how can we know this well there are different ways to do that okay so I'm not, I'm not an expert in flunk but I will show you how I did it. 
first let's say that we want we are going to use some logic things and we're going to use some if so when we plunk okay we're going to check we're going to check the heading so as I told you okay as I told you we're going to check if this guy it is like uh, if heading it is here okay it's heading but we are not going to use this one I'm going to use another one we need to check two conditions for example if we want to the right okay if get heading it is smaller so remember Just let's write something here. Uh, let me go here. Uh, let's go here. So let's take it like this. When you have values from here to here, the map inventory will be from zero to 90. So we want to have the values from here. When someone swipes like this, so for example, if I swipe, imagine that this is my swipe. So it goes like, almost like 90. If I swipe like this, the traditional swipe, so it goes from here, maybe like 20, okay, or maybe 40, okay, I guess from 40, from 0 to 40, it will be to the right, okay, so I'm talking about the heading, okay, so if it's smaller than 45, let's say 45, and well, let's use, I, I made a mistake with this block. And, okay, so, and, if it's smaller, if it's smaller than 55 here, it's smaller than 55 and bigger than zero, okay? Or we can use just like this. I will do it like that, okay? And heading. Uh, bigger, equal or bigger than zero. So this will be right, okay? So then you can set the value of the heading to something. And well, uh, we're going to do what? Okay, so well, we can make it like this. <clears throat> We're going to use now the jumping procedure. We want to jump to the left. Okay, so we can create again the variables. Okay, left, right, okay, and then we check it. So let's make it like that and we show you how. Okay, so let's get a new variable and this will call you. Um, direction of jump so and then we are going to use here a string set global direction of jump to right oh sorry right that's it lc Another condition. Now we are going to analyze. So what do you think to the other one? For the other one, I want to start my here and then for here. So the opposite. So if the value it is like it was here, let's say 
if the value is bigger than 135 140 I don't know 135 okay and smaller than 180 so you jump to the left so 135 180 135 and 180 so if the value and now let's check if it's correct if the heading okay or the direction of the swipe it is smaller no it is bigger this and it is smaller or equal to 180 okay so we are going to set the global direction to left so and then when we want to go up okay so for this we are going to do this we are going to add another else if and this is going to be to the vertical jump okay so again we just duplicate this and for this one so let's say uh, if the value it is line smaller than 135 and it is like the other one it was 45 so bigger than 45 bigger or equal to 45 okay so from here so let's go to the extractor <clears throat> so check the values we have 135 from 45 to 135 45 to 135 this is like up okay so set the global direction of the jump to up and that's it ah, another thing that is important when we plunk we jump okay we're going to set this like jumping thing okay well, well <coughs> let's create the procedure let's create the procedure for jumping and we're going to use two procedures jumping procedure one so first we need to start everything we need to start the engine okay so um, for that remember that we have a clock so this clock it will help us to uh, to move okay to make this kind of animation and for that we are going to do jump one okay and in jump one we are going to add this thing we are going to check first if we want to jump we need to make sure that we are not like jumping okay so we are going to use conditions here if equals and we are going to use one variable this is not the one that I need if is jumping it's equal to false okay so if it's not jumping okay set this variable okay well if not jumping we are going to do this we are going to set this variable again to true now it will be like true and everything will start so we are going to what it's going to happen well the y speed oh sorry remember that we set it to player speed y let's sell it at the beginning at zero okay because it's not moving we don't want to be like moving so we are going to set it at zero but when we start the procedure we want to set it to this negative value so in this case let's set it like minus 20 okay so then we are going to enable our animation okay our clock so 
jumping clock will be enabled. So, and then we go here to jumping clock, enable the jumping clock. We're going to enable the jumping clock. We're going to set it to true. Okay. So now we need to pass to the procedure of the jumping clock. So for this, we're going to use the second procedure that I mentioned. Okay. So I'm going to use jumping procedure two. Okay. So now for the jumping procedure two, we are going to have some conditions here to check. Okay. So this is the one that it will be like in the in the clock. Okay. So first, we need to make sure need to make sure that we are jumping. So if we set this state, if we activate this, okay, we need to check. Okay. First, we check this part. Okay, so now global jumping is true. We need to make sure also that the player that is on the ground. Remember the value of the ground? If a player player position. Okay, so let's use this, duplicate this. We go to the player. Uh, here, well, not the player, I mean the ground, lower platform ground. So we need to check if the position, okay, it is equal, okay. So let's call it here. So the white position, so we need the player sprite. So we need to check that is the position of this guy, it is in the ground. Okay, so remember that we subtract the value, so it has to be the position in the ground. So if this is true, okay, now we want to do what? So we want to first, okay, if it's true, we want to set, we're going to increase all these six things, okay, first we're going to set oh, sorry gravity the y the player speed we are going to increase the speed we are going to increase the speed and the speed we will be like modifying by the gravity so the speed plus the gravity, so these are like opposite forces, okay, so it will jump, yes, okay, negative value, okay, but then the gravity, it will like take it down, okay, so now, global player speed, and then we are going to refresh the position of the player, So we're going to refresh the X, the Y position. Okay, so this kind of jumping thing. So we're going to do it like that. By using its speed. Global player speed. And player sprite. So the position plus the previous speed that is like uh, fighting against the gravity. Okay, and that's it. So if it's jumping, okay, it's true. And if it's not jumping, okay, what happens if it's not jumping? Well, if it's not jumping, we want the player to have this position, okay? So if it's jumping, that's perfect. Oh, sorry, maybe no. So if the player is different from this, we will take it. Well, you know what? Let's remove this just to make to think what we have here. Okay, so check. First, let's analyze this. 
Did he jump in? Okay, we pass this value from the other one, from the jumping procedure. He's jumping, set it to true. Okay, so now, if player sprite x, uh, y, here it is uh, equals to the ground, so now the player can jump. Okay, so it is in the ground, so you can jump, you can jump. If you are in a different position, you cannot jump again. Okay, so now it will modify here just the y, the x. But now what happens forward there? Well, first let's check if this is working. Let's call this guy. And let's insert the procedure. Jumping procedure two. The jumping procedure one has to be here when we flunk. So it will do that. Okay. So now what? Let's check it. Ah, so call jumping procedure. And timer duplicate so and then we need to disable this guy when we finish okay if this is not true else we're going to disable the clock so call procedure 2 let's check it well I am flunk I'm trying to make plunk, but it's not happening because we need to refresh all these variables that we created. So let's refresh and let's see what happens. Okay. Now it's okay. So we need to fix this because it was an equal to this. Well, the idea it was ah, just a little mistake. Okay, well, let's check the procedure for the jumping. Well, for jumping. It was like that okay so we have if okay we need to check if he's jumping okay we need to check if he's jumping or not if he's jumping well uh, if jumping is equals to false okay so that means that it's not jumping it's not in the air set global jumping to true okay because we are going to start the procedure then set global player speed to minus 20 minus 20 is because it is a negative force that goes up okay so against the gravity that goes uh, goes down then you have set jumping clock you enable the clock that it has the uh, animation the animation that it will uh, be in the clock it will be like this first this is the basic idea first you have here if jumping is true that we enable enable it with the flunk okay so we call it okay here so we set the speed okay that will be like uh, 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 modified by the gravity okay so remember the negative value minus okay minus 20 plus 9 uh, plus 9 that is the uh, gravity and then it will do this every time the clock cycles then it will modify also the y based on the speed and its current position now we need to check something while we are doing this okay if the sprite the y okay it is like bigger okay or equals this is very important because i had this mistake okay i was with equal okay and i was suffering for this but if this value is bigger or equal to the platform ground okay the platform ground remember okay so we need to do something okay so the platform ground is where the sprite will be like placed so the original position okay when it's standing so we need to set this it's not jumping anymore because it's on the platform okay so disable this animation clock for the jumping and uh, here okay we set just in case uh, it will get our move a little bit we make sure that the player stays in the over the platform okay so now we have this is the basic behavior but what about if we want uh, as i told you we make these things okay here we are uh, making the jumping procedure we need to check if it's going to the right going to the left or going to uh, going up okay so that's why we have this kind of variable okay so we need to create here another okay uh, for to modify the direction of the jump so it will when we modify the direction we will modify the x okay so let's start first with the easiest one i guess that is the up 
so when we go up we're going to use some more uh, if conditions okay so we're going to use these ones okay so we are going to enable this okay and here we're going to use it <coughs> here so we're going to check if okay and we're going to use this to check the variable is a text okay so if okay we get this variable that is the direction 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 of the jump equals to this value jump duplicate if this equal this text it, that is our this string that we have in the variable okay we want to do what okay but we just want to x it is the equals to zero okay it is not necessary to add it i, I know okay but it is just to make sure things are better for you to understand okay so the x position it will be like no modify okay x position it's equals to nothing okay so it will be like equal to you cannot say like at the position remember we're not going to modify the position don't write zero because if you write zero it will write placing it in zero zero sounds very really cool x x plus zero okay so now but else if and again we duplicate this guy and if it is now right we go right remember i told you something about right in inkscape or in the other so remember when we have values that go from here okay if we want this guy to move to the right so values are positive so it will modify the x okay in a positive way so we're going to set this like maybe 10 i guess that's okay or maybe 8 okay so and else if so we're going to set it here we duplicate this guy and we want it left just make sure you write it uh, in the same way in the variable thing okay left right okay so so you have right you increase the value and you have left so remember values uh, when you want to go to the left values have to be like negative values or decreasing values okay so in this case oops sorry we will go here 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 minus eight now so now we need to check if this is working or not so i flung here and it's not doing doing it so player sprite so we are going to check ah well it's not doing this because maybe it needs to be in the other part but well let's move this guy here and that's it now i am here this part to this part it's not doing like that so if i do it up yes it's working that one but when I flung to the left, it's not doing it. But it's going this position. So we need to know why, but it's happening. But in that case, okay, we need to check. So if it's left, well, let's do something. Let's check the variable here. And let's do it in the uh, screen. Just to have something to a message for us. Screen title, set screen title. Okay, and let's drop it right here. Let's drop it right here and give us the duplicate to check if this 
here right it's not checking left up oh, yes so let's check y so right 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 so we have right and we don't have left left is not working because with left okay so with left it is bigger than 135 and it is smaller than 180 so why Yes, it's working. So, but we can make it bigger than 180. So let's make it like. Let's go here to our protector. So maybe here, because I normally swipe like this. So maybe let's call it 220. 220. Okay, here, well, let's check it, and here, yes, much better, more, more natural. Okay, and when we flunk, there is another thing, when we flunk, we want to set this walking variable, this walking set it to false because it will be like jumping okay or we flunk set it to false and when we have the end of this thing okay when jumping is false is working it will be right true now we have this okay and why because when we have the walking procedure remember so if we can use here so we check it's walking it's true don't chop okay so now here when we flunk we set it to false touch down that will happen okay so here if we touch down it's through the clock touch up and when we flunk false and we set it to true now if you check speed the jumping speed it's not very high gravity it's really powerful so let's use 30 and that looks much better Play with the values, okay, depending on your character. So maybe like 12 and 12, yeah. I guess it looks happier. Left, right, up. 
Okay, but now what? We need to set something here. When we finish this here, we set the global direction of jump to nothing. So we reset the, reset the values. So global direction of to nothing. So when we finish to jump. Okay, and then we have here let me take it. So when I jump in, when I swipe to the left, I jump to the left. When I touch, when I touch, when I go up, 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 and that's it. And then I guess this is the very long first part of this tutorial. And we can add some sounds. What if we add some sounds? What do you think? Well, let's go here to Designer, and I will show you a very nice place that I use for this kind of uh, game sounds, okay? And it's you write in Google a bit sounds, and then you will use a very, very, very excellent uh, program, okay? That is the BFXR, okay? And it's amazing, okay? So let's go here, you have some sounds here. And let's go for jump. I don't know if you are listening to this. Uh, here. Let's say. Well, let's use something. I like this one. And you have some variations. It is really cool, okay? It is amazing. You can modify it if you understand a little bit about sounds and these things, okay? So, or you can just play with them, okay? You can modify or add different things. So, let's use this one. So, I export it. Export. And then you have jump. And maybe here, new folder. And then we call it sounds. And we call it a jump. Well, jump final, jump, jump. You can use this, that's it. Then you go to App Inventor, you go for Sounds, Media, Sounds. Then you go here to rename, just type it. Let's maybe like uh, this source. We need to upload, select, jump, that's it. And then we need one, when I when I move I wanted to have a little sound, so I use for this one, the blip. I need something very, very, very. Some of these things okay to make the yeah, things better. Like for example, here you can be jump. Really, this is a great, great, great software. Well, if you are not an expert like me, you can experiment. I like this one. Then you export it, adjust everything, export, and then move. Maybe you can have move to the left and move to the right, but it's okay. And 
here this time. I like this one. So I just better this one. And let me check it. Yes, that's perfect. So now here we go and add another sound. So we call this one jump. Jumping. And we call this one. moving now moving it has to be line I don't know like 40 it will be okay or maybe 10 but uh, we're going to float and then we move and then we set it okay so now we add this to the blocks okay so when we plunk we want to use the sound and when we walk when we walk okay we want to use uh, this beautiful sound It's very fast the one from the moving you can set it to 100 for example wait a little bit and that's it I guess that's all for this tutorial okay I hope it was clear okay and maybe for the next time I will show you how to make it like a more like a game okay so if you check the previous uh, well my video okay the previous video it was like eating ice cream okay so there are many possibilities of this okay and about using the canvas I have some very nice ideas okay I will show you how to modify this and to make it in a more uh, interesting game okay but for now you have just the basics okay to have your own um, uh, platform game okay so you can change sprites okay and to make it uh, for example when it uh, when goes to the left when goes to the right and goes up okay maybe change this thing and that's it well Thanks for watching this video guys, please help me uh, share this video, I know it was a little bit long, uh, but I hope not very long because I will edit, it, uh, edit this video and if you have any problems, questions, suggestions, please let me know them, okay, and share this video as I told you, like it, okay, help me with that things, okay, and I hope you help me with these things, okay, so thanks for watching this and enjoy App Inventor and inventing creating making things in the computer so i will see you next time goodbye